This episode of Beyond the Hunt is Pete Shapley hunt for the world record desert bighorn with his bow. Now we know that the, the world record ram is on Tiburon Island, but it was just a matter of finding one of them. The one thing that I wasn't aware of that I found very interesting was the dynamic that we had within our camp. We had some young guns, I'll say, out of Canada that came down. We had some guys from around the Phoenix and Tucson area. We had the Mexican sheep guides and we had the Siri Indian sheep guides. So we had this mix of four different cultures, basically, that were all in one camp looking for a world record round. To be on the backside and watching all of this play out, there's a lot of pride. And each group knows that they know sheep better than the other group. It became very tense at times. It was always for the best. I mean, all the guys were doing their best to try to find the world record ram, but to listen to the guys argue back and forth about what made that ram good or not gonna touch that world record status was really interesting and it became quite heated and emotional at times. We spent days in camp where Pete was hitting a paper plate at 100 yards every single shot. I mean, it was nothing for Pete to shoot 100 yards. He obviously knows his equipment well, knows what his bow is capable of, and he knows what he's capable of. At one point in Pete's hunt, we had an opportunity on a pretty good ram. The best we could do was get to about 100 yards of him. When we got this ram at 100 yards, I don't think there was any hesitation. The problem was is we had to set it and wait him out in the sun for so long. And when that ram finally got up, he kind of got onto us. We, as bow hunters, miss, and unfortunately this time Pete had uh, swung and missed. I range found him at 98 and uh, took a shot and shot about a foot over him. So I uh, thought my 100 yard pin was good, but uh, wasn't good enough or I didn't do something right. I think I'm a little aggressive on the shot. So, but anyway, it was, uh, it was a tough day all the way around. It's not as easy when you get the tall order of a world record. It makes it a lot more difficult. I mean, like a thousand times. After Pete had missed his ram, we uh, spent a lot of days glassing, and we finally found another ram that we were, for sure, this ram was better than the ram he missed. It was an absolute giant, old ram. He was with one other juvenile type ram. He was in some Ocotillo brush, and we kind of worked our way up the backside, and as we crested, the top of this ridge, this ram was working his way right up to us. I mean, it was almost too good to be true. But the one bad part that we knew could be an issue was, is the younger ram that was with him was starting to get up the mountain quicker than he was. The bigger ram is walking right towards us, and as he gets to the younger ram, he's 20 yards, and it's perfect timing. I've got the camera, I'm walking to the spot I need to be. I lean out past the brush, and Pete's just waiting for the ram to take a step out behind so he can shoot right past me. And away they go, and it's over just like that. Instant heartbreak. You're in the desert and, and climbing the mountains for, for 60 days, it's rough. And you know, you got Pete who's 70 some years old doing this, man, it's pretty impressive. But at the end of the day, it's taking the toll on the body. One of the guides had found an absolute giant ram and wasn't sure, he knew he was world record with a bow, but wasn't sure if we could even get to him. We ended up calling Raul on the sat phone and asked if we could go after him with the rifle. We knew at this point we were gonna give up the world record 
quest with a bow. The entire team had put in so much time and work and effort towards trying to accomplish this goal. Kind of felt it was fitting to see if we could give Pete a chance. That wind isn't blowing in this canyon. It shouldn't affect the bullet much. So as I'm filming, I finally give Pete the, the go ahead to get by me. And as Pete stepped past me, he stepped on a stick and I promise you it was no bigger than a pencil. And it popped. And at 680 some yards across that canyon, would you believe that ram picked his head up and wheeled around and looked right at us. He starts side hilling up back and forth and he goes, he's going up the mountain. He's going to get out of Dodge. Top one, Pete. Stay on. 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 Wow. 48 days in this hunt, T Bruin Island, and we shot him with a rifle. A lot of time. Saw a lot of sheep. It's a great hunt. Hot, dry. It couldn't have happened any other way. Like, for the time that we put in and that Pete put in to have it happen the way that it happened, to make an amazing shot for that ram to die like that, you couldn't have went any better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. 38 and some change long. 38 and 16 start now. 16 is 38. You want to talk about an absolute giant ram. When we picked that ram up, it was just a whole nother level of sheep. I'm not a sheep guy, but you can tell when you're looking at something special and that ram was that shy of going 190 inches, which is, I mean, some of the guys were saying top three to five kind of deal. And I think the sheep gods were looking down on us that day. Another trip of a lifetime and so stoked to be a part of it. Hey, if you want more behind the scenes of Beyond the Hunt, be sure to click the subscribe button, hit like, and ring the bell for more adventures.